Since the Space Launch System lifted off on November 16th, the Orion spacecraft has been busy completing a host of different burns, trajectory maneuvers, tests, and much more. After successfully performing a burn to insert Orion into a distant retrograde orbit, NASA just announced a new record set by the spacecraft. Specifically, yesterday, Orion broke the record for the farthest distance traveled from Earth by a human-rated spacecraft and more than 250,000 miles from the planet. The last time a human spacecraft came anywhere near this distance from Earth was decades ago a part of the Apollo 13 mission, an impressive sign that highlights some of the exciting missions to come after Artemis 1. Currently, the spacecraft is still traveling even farther from the Earth and setting new records as I speak. This is expected to continue happening until tomorrow the 28th, when the spacecraft reaches its maximum distance from the planet. Not to mention a bunch of other important milestones and tests being completed. Here I'll go more in depth into this new record, what Orion has been up to, what to expect in the coming weeks, and more. Just yesterday afternoon, NASA tweeted saying, Houston, we have a new record. On Saturday, November 26, at 8.40 a.m. ET, NASA Orion broke the record for the farthest distance traveled from Earth of a human-rated spacecraft. The record was previously held by Apollo 13 at 248,655 statute miles from Earth. In this case, on the 11th day of the Artemis 1 mission, Orion continued its journey beyond the moon after entering a distant retrograde orbit Friday, November 25th at 3.52 p.m. CST. Orion will remain in this orbit for six days before exiting lunar orbit to put the spacecraft on a trajectory back toward Earth with a scheduled splashdown in the Pacific Ocean on Sunday, December 11th. To be exact, Orion surpassed the distance record for a mission with a spacecraft designed to carry humans to deep space and back to Earth at 7.42 a.m. Saturday, November 26th. At its maximum distance from the moon, Orion will be more than 270,000 miles from Earth Monday, November 28th. In addition, engineers completed the first orbital maintenance burn by firing auxiliary thrusters on Orion's service module at 3.52 p.m. for less than a second to propel the spacecraft at 0.47 feet per second. NASA points out that the planned orbital maintenance burns will fine-tune Orion's trajectory as it continues its orbit around the moon. Assuming everything goes perfectly with the rest of the mission, the next step will be Artemis II with real astronauts. However, an important part of ensuring the safety of the future crew is collecting a host of invaluable data from this mission. Flying aboard Orion on the Artemis 1 mission is a suited mannequin named after a key player in bringing Apollo 13 safely back to Earth. Arturo Campos was an electrical engineer who developed a plan to provide the command module with enough electrical power to navigate home safely after an oxygen tank aboard the service module of the Apollo spacecraft ruptured. Commander Munikin Campos is outfitted with sensors to provide data on what crew members may experience in flight, continuing Campos' legacy of enabling human exploration in deep space. Around half a century ago, NASA launched many missions a part of the Apollo program. Artemis is trying to build on the experience of these missions. With Artemis, humans will return to the lunar surface, and this time to stay. NASA will use innovative technologies to explore the moon's south pole and more of the lunar surface than ever before, using the Gateway Space Station in lunar orbit along with advanced spacesuits and rovers. NASA is confident they will lead the way in collaboration with international and commercial partners to establish the first long-term presence on the moon. Then, they will use what they learn on and around the moon to take the next giant leap, sending the first astronauts to Mars. Now that we know more about the new record set by Orion and some of its operations yesterday on the 26th, we can take a closer look at its distant retrograde orbit and how it was propelled so far from Earth. Just two days ago on November 25th, NASA tweeted mentioning, NASA Johnson Flight Controller successfully performed a burn to insert NASA Orion into a distant retrograde orbit. While in lunar orbit, flight controllers will monitor key systems and perform checkouts while in the environment of deep space. Specifically, on flight day 10, flight controllers in the White Flight Control Room at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston successfully performed a burn to insert Orion into a distant retrograde orbit by firing the orbital maneuvering system engine for 1 minute and 28 seconds at 4.52 p.m. CST, propelling the spacecraft at 363 feet per second. Shortly before conducting the burn, Orion was traveling more than 57,000 miles above the lunar surface, marking the farthest distance it will reach from the moon during the mission. The orbit is distant in that Orion will fly about 40,000 miles above the moon. Due to the distance of the orbit, it will take Orion nearly a week to complete half an orbit around the moon, where it will exit the orbit for a return journey home. About four days later, the spacecraft will harness the moon's gravitational force once again, combined with a precisely timed lunar flyby burn to slingshot Orion onto its return course to Earth. It's important to point out that on Artemis 1, engineers are testing several aspects of the Orion spacecraft needed for deep space missions with crew, 
including its highly capable propulsion system to maintain its course with precision and ensure its crew can get home, communication and navigation systems to maintain contact with the ground and orient the spacecraft, systems and features to handle radiation events, as well as a heat shield that can handle a high-speed re-entry from the moon. Distance and duration demand that spacecraft must have systems that can reliably operate far from home, be capable of keeping astronauts alive in case of emergencies, and still be light enough that a rocket can launch it. Artemis II will test the systems required for astronauts to live and breathe in deep space. Long-duration missions far from Earth drive engineers to design compact systems not only to maximize available space for crew comfort, but also to accommodate the volume needed to carry consumables like enough food and water for the entirety of a mission lasting days or weeks. However, before this next mission, Artemis I needs to be completed. As partially mentioned prior, for its return trip to Earth, Orion will do another close flyby that takes the spacecraft within about 60 miles of the moon's surface. The spacecraft will use another precisely timed engine firing as the European provided service module in conjunction with the moon's gravity to accelerate back toward Earth. This maneuver will set the spacecraft on its trajectory back toward Earth to enter our planet's atmosphere traveling at 25,000 miles per hour or 11 kilometers per second, producing temperatures of approximately 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 2,760 degrees Celsius, faster and hotter than Orion experienced during its 2014 flight test. After about 4-6 to six weeks and a total distance traveled exceeding 1.3 million miles, the mission will end with a test of Orion's capability to return safely to Earth as the spacecraft attempts to make a precision landing within eyesight of the recovery ship off the coast of California. While there are no humans within the capsule on this mission, an important step prior to Artemis II will be the return journey of Orion. Following splashdown, Orion will remain powered for a period of time as divers from the U.S. Navy and operations teams from NASA's Exploration Ground Systems approach in small boats from the waiting recovery ship. The divers will briefly inspect the spacecraft for hazards before hooking it up, and then engineers will tow the capsule into the well deck of the recovery ship to bring the spacecraft home. With this first exploration mission, NASA is working to lead the next steps of human exploration into deep space, where astronauts will build and begin testing the systems near the moon needed for lunar surface missions and exploration to other destinations farther from Earth, including Mars. The second flight will take crew on a different trajectory and test Orion's critical systems with humans aboard. The SLS rocket will also evolve from an initial configuration capable of sending more than 26 metric tons to the moon to a final configuration that can send at least 45 metric tons. These future missions will land humans on the lunar south pole. Water is a critical resource for long-term exploration, and that's one of the main reasons NASA will send astronauts to the moon's south pole. For almost two weeks, Orion has been traveling hundreds of thousands of miles away from the Earth and to the moon. Just yesterday, the spacecraft beat the record for the farthest distance traveled from Earth of a human-rated spacecraft, a record previously held by Apollo 13 at around a quarter million miles away. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.